Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again, it is time for a dynamic effort upper day, but a quick reminder for those of you who watch these videos, uh, please remember to click like down below, be greatly appreciated. So I decided to go back and use chains again this week instead of bands. I know I ran bands uh, the last couple weeks, but I want to vary the stimulus. And if anything, chains versus bands probably varies the stimulus even more than changing bars. Uh, and so, it, it's good to just rotate it. Basically, every week I want it to be different. Uh, it took a few sets to get into the groove to really start getting the speed I wanted. So I did 10 of these, and I think I'm going to do more volume on the benching and deadlifting in general. Try to do 10 sets of each. Uh, squats aren't quite as important, uh, mainly because I feel like my squat's in a good place. I'm not as worried about it. I really want the deadlift and bench to come up by worlds. So more speed work means more practice on them. So we put more effort towards it. And I'll be probably doing a lot of the rotating the sumo and conventional route. But speed bench, um, in keeping with the theme, we're sticking with close grip. And I definitely expect some good PRs. Uh, like I said, I'm changing the max work every week. And we watched me go from struggling before with even 300 for a while again as I've been rebuilding hitting 315 with a pause on a close grip and then taking the buffalo bar which is slightly harder doing 332 pause on a close grip this week now it felt like close to a max it was well above 95 percent you know it was a slow rep but we locked it clean and pretty had a good pause so we'll mess around with some stuff i might do a floor press or a football bar this coming week and then i want to test my real close grip again probably the week after so, again, just to vary the stimulus a little bit and to avoid overuse, kind of looking at my bench, I'm fast off the chest even with that close grip. Where'd we stick? We kind of stuck in the middle, which tells me at the moment, I don't need a lot of dumbbell or McDonald bar work or any of that. Um, if I start sticking closer to the chest, it might be a real good idea to work those back in, but I'm not sticking there. We're sticking in the mid-range to the lockout. It's where we're slowing at. I'm powerful off the chest, and I think the speed work is going to maintain that. So decided to do some floor pressing. All right, why floor pressing? Takes any possible leg drive out, takes any possible heave out coming off the chest. It starts just above the chest. For me, that's about an inch off my chest. But I have to build speed from just off the chest. So I think for me, this is, again, I don't do a lot of assistance stuff, and I want my assistance work when I do it to be very hypertrophic. So again, this one makes sense. We did five sets of 10. I might have got 11 reps on the last set, 11 or 12. I don't know. I felt like I, I got more on the last one. Uh, but I went with the same weight. I've been close gripping, and this should be a harder movement. So this tells me I'm either getting stronger because I, I ended up getting slightly better, I think, especially if I got an extra rep. Either I'm getting stronger or I'm just stronger at the floor press. Now, we'll find out. I think if I try a floor press this next week, we'll kind of see where I'm at. And, and it might be the case that it might be stronger. I mean, if I come in and floor press 335 or something, uh, we'll know the floor press is probably in a good place. But I'm going to do the floor press for a little while. I want to mess with it some. I uh, may not do it on max effort day. I may just stick with close gripping with a pause. Although, I may not need to. Maybe the floor press might be the movement for me to do for a couple weeks. And then we can change it up a little bit again. Uh, again, trying to avoid that overuse. All right. What did I say I was going to do? We're going to do everything fat bar. I did my pull-ups this morning with a normal bar. Part of me is debating flipping it back over and going to the fat bar for my pull-ups also. I didn't film those, uh, but they went pretty well. On these, I got 18 to 20 reps all the way through. No grip. I did not have to re-grip. All right, so we know grip strength is coming up real fast, and I got a tremendous lat and rear delt pump. I felt my rear delts and my lats a lot on this. But... We know that my grip and forearms are improving. So because of that, because they got such a really good pump off this, I didn't do the hammer curls today. I did them earlier this week. So at five sets of hammer curls in a week, that's plenty, especially given all the pulling. Because uh, we're doing 20 sets of these axle bar rows every week. 
and I'm doing the upright rows, and I'm doing pull-ups. I'm doing at least five sets of, of full range of motion pull-ups with a wide grip. It's a lot of forearm and bicep work. It really is. And, you know, people notice that, that there's something I'm starting to agree with winning on. And it's something I've noticed, you know, a lot of physical therapists note for people in the gym that they go, I see physical therapists saying, look, guys, don't be doing a bunch of supine curls. So it ends up inflaming biceps, everything else. Just stick with hammer group. Stick to hammer curls and things. And you can just change them between cables and dumbbells and bands and whatever if you want different stimulus. You know, and, and that's the other thing. That's, we don't have a lot of data really showing that supine curls build biceps more but we know brachialis and radial brachialis get work more with hammer stuff and it works grip you know grip is everything for me right now i feel like for me as long as i keep my grip strong my deadlift lockouts are always so much cleaner you know because then that's where i tend to stick is right at the knee so i want to be able to drive and pull through there and i feel like a better stronger grip always helps with that in addition to the low back stuff right we know low back for me is probably been a weak link so again that's why i'm doing all those deficit pulls uh, i want to do a lot of my training matches off a of deficit and this week it went good but we're also seeing those reverse hypers come up so for me reverse hypers grip work all that's going to be the key uh, but upright rows i realized you know they were pretty easy this last week my shoulders are growing so i went ahead and went up to a full plate aside Got my five by 10 and I had to rest pause a little bit on some of these, you know, just to re, re kind of catch things, but I got the reps, a uh, lot of, a lot of shoulder work. And I like the upright row because it does work forearms and biceps, but it, it hits all three heads of the delts and the upper trap, all right? It's a very balanced shoulder exercise, but again, it's a good multi-joint movement. And I got a forearm pump and everything, especially, and biceps, especially after doing all those fat bar inverted rows first before you guys ask no i'm not gonna try to do upright rows with the fat bar although that would be a hell of a grip tool wouldn't it right that would be a great grip tool that's kind of next level though to hang on to that for 10 plus reps and upright row it could be tough so because this was harder today um the the plate front raises were actually pretty difficult these were not easy today i still got my 15 what i say i wanted to try to work towards 15s now since i managed it on the last set after doing tens uh, but i got it for three but they were hard they were difficult or they were difficult and I, I went for a four set and i got about 13 and my delts were just shot delts were shot but the perk of this you know it does work the front delt side delt straps but it also works the upper chest quite a bit uh, closed grip benching we know is slightly more biased towards upper chest, right? Slightly more biased upper chest if we go off EMG data. Now, I always like to point out EMG is not the be-all end-all, but I feel like this is potentially carrying over to my bench. The upright row in theory should, but if nothing else, it just builds a shoulder girdle and will help with my deadlifts and everything. Uh, this should have bench carryover, okay? Should have bench carryover because of the front delt, upper chest, traps. All right, that should help a lot with my raw bench, especially with a closer grip. Um, and and again, so I mean delts, shoulders, and then triceps, 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 which ended up being the name of the game at the end. You know, and that was something one of the other regular posters, who's a pretty strong guy, I've chatted with him in private a bit. Uh, you know, pointed out he's like, yeah, there's over here people saying. The band press downs, oh, they don't work, but here you are, your triceps are getting bigger, getting stronger, work capacity is going up, your bench is coming back up, All right? And I believe they do work, and I think there's a lot of, of supportive anecdotal data of that. You know, we could argue from a hypertrophy perspective because they're a more contracted position movement. They may not be set per set optimal for hypertrophy, and I think we can make a fair point about that because stretch position movements always build more muscle set for set. Almost always, almost always, not always, majority of the time. Contracted position stuff actually is a less hypertrophic. Sorry, bodybuilders. But what do we have to think about here? Specificity. This speeds up and for, it has accommodating resistance through the part 
where I stick on my bench press. We have that. But we also have to think about when we talk stretch position, what about the, the myotatic reflex? Because the bands, especially when we're doing them faster, they have an overspeed eccentric. Now, that overspeed eccentric on these is nice for stimulating potentially growth in the tendons, and that's one of the reasons we do these. We want to really, really, really thicken those tendons up. And the reason I want to thicken them up and I'm pushing these so hard is because I did notice when I was messing with JM presses a little bit of elbow inflammation. Small amount, and it wasn't much, but I can't have that four months out from Worlds when my bench has sucked and I've got to rebuild it. I can't afford it. So I'm doubling down on these, and once these get really, really strong, and once my elbows are in very, very good health, I'll go back and mess with some of the deeper stretch position movements. I'll mess with the JM presses, right? We'll, we'll do all that stuff to, again, take the triceps to the next level. But I've got to do some base building stuff here. And I feel like for me, because of where my sticking points or slowdown points are on my bench, because again, I'm close gripping now, this movement gives me the strength curve that I want. In addition to the fact that we could argue set to set hypertrophy, fine. What about the blood flow? What about the elbow health? That's all there, but I'm doing 10 sets of these twice a week. That's 20 sets. At a certain point, as our training volumes go up, your set for set hypertrophy starts to not matter. With enough high quality training volume, with close to limit sets, and these are easy to recover from. Okay, so our stimulus to fatigue is good. At a certain point, it doesn't matter. We're still stimulating maximum growth. And it gives me a second movement pattern, a second strength curve, and slightly different muscles than all the close grip work. Keeping in mind, we're doing a lot of close grip pressing. All right, let's set aside the max work and the speed work. I've done five sets of close grip bench this week, five sets of close grip floor press. That's a lot of tricep work. All right, this is a big supplemental. It's really what it is. But yes, we're doing a lot of it. It's making up, taking up a lot of my training because we're doing 20 sets a week. But I think it's going to pay off, and I feel like it is paying off, and the tricep pump is tremendous. It's tremendous. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.